A simple solar hot water heating system does not have to be very large, and it can be backed up with a tank or a tankless water heater. A solar hot water system may not supply all the hot water. However, preheating groundwater before it enters the backup heating system should put a serious dent in the hot water bill. Differential controllers are used to automate the process of collecting solar heat. They do this by sensing both collector and storage temperature. Then they activate the pump to collect heat when the time is right. This video demonstrates how differential controllers sense temperature differences and activate pumps at the appropriate times. Thermocouples Remisters and even transistors can be used to sense temperature, but thermistors are commonly used in the range between 0 degrees Fahrenheit and 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So, we'll use thermistors to sense temperature. The NTC negative temperature coefficient thermistor decreases its resistance as temperature increases. We'll be using the NTC 10K thermistor. It's called a 10K thermistor because at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, it has a resistance close to 10,000 ohms. This curve shows how the resistance of the thermistor changes between minus 30 degrees centigrade and 70 degrees centigrade. Notice the resistance at 25 degrees centigrade is 10K. And, as you know, 25 degrees centigrade is about equal to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, we understand thermistors change resistance as temperature changes. So how can we use this information to control a differential controller? First, Let's examine this simple voltage divider with R1 equal to R2. What will the voltage be at the common junction? If you said 2.5 volts, you understand basic electronics. If not, you may want to study Ohm's law before going on. Now, let's replace the resistors with thermistors and pass current through them. If one end of the divider is connected to a plus 5 volt source and the other end is connected to ground, what will the voltage be at the common junction? Well, Mr. Canavan, that depends on the temperature of each of the sensors. Very good. The top sensor is the collector thermistor and the bottom sensor is the storage temperature. For now, let's say they are both at the same temperature. Now what will be the common junction voltage? Oh, that's easy. If both sensors have the same temperature, the resistance will be equal, and the voltage at the common junction of the divider will be half the supply voltage or 2.5 volts. That's right. Now, what would happen to the common junction voltage if only the collector thermistor is heated? Well, the common junction voltage would increase because the resistance of the collector thermistor would drop. Right again. You now understand how heat availability can be measured. Now let's take a look at how this information can be used to activate a pump. In order to do this, we'll first need to know how an operational amplifier works. This is a schematic for a single operational amplifier. Notice the inverting input and the non-inverting input, and the output. These are the only points we'll be concerned with other than the supply voltage. Here is a simplified sketch of an op-amp. Let's simplify it a little more. 
The supply voltage has a positive rail and a negative rail. The negative rail is, typ is typically ground. These rails remain the same while the op-amp is working, but the inputs change to force the output towards a positive or negative rail. What happens if the non-inverting input is slightly higher than the inverting input? We'll put 1.2 volts on the positive input and 1.1 volts on the negative input. What will happen to the output voltage? Well, the output voltage should go towards the positive rail if the positive input is higher than the negative input. How close it gets to the rail, of course, will depend on the op-amp. This op-amp reaches 11 volts. It's high enough to trip a relay and activate a pump. Now, all we need is a voltage on the negative input, so the positive input has something to respond to. If we connect the resistor divider and the thermistor divider to the op-amp, it would look something like this. But this circuit is too crude to work effectively and avoid chatter. To avoid chatter, we'll need positive feedback to create a latch circuit. And we'll talk about this latch circuit in Differential Controller 102. For now, let's be content with understanding that the plus input of the op-amp is controlled through the common junction of the thermistors and the minus input is controlled with an adjustable voltage divider. When the temperature of the collector is higher than the storage temperature, the op-amp output goes high. When the collector gets colder than the storage tank, the op-amp output goes low. This is the basic idea. But there are more concepts to consider. Check out Differential Controller 102 for details on the latch circuit and the chatter control.